Hello, Redophiles! We got a great episode coming up for you, but before that, we just wanted to say, if you haven't done it yet, sign up to our Patreon. There are now tons of exclusive episodes on there that you are going to love. Go to patreon.com slash the year is pod. Sign up right now. Three pounds. Not a big deal. Also, I am at Soho Theatre July 5th and 6th in London doing my last tour shows of Cockroach before I take it to the Edinburgh Fringe. Uh, go to bobbymare.net and buy some tickets. Okay, enjoy the app. The year is with Red and Bobby. Welcome to the Year Is podcast, a podcast where every episode, me uh, and not Bobby Mayer this week, we have Jade Adams in this week, go back to a year in history and look at the most interesting, disgusting and fun things of that year. Hello, Jade. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Red. I'm thrilled to be here. It's good to have you on. Um, Bobby can't make it today. Where is he? He's been arrested. <laughs> um, what me and Jody didn't know is that underneath this podcast studio, Bobby was running a sweatshop. <laughs> and one of the children that were in the sweatshop uh, crawled out through a vent and told the police, and he's just been carted off just this morning. Wow. So, yeah, you never knew. This whole 28 or so episodes, was people suffering underneath us for Bobby's uh, vile uh, G-string business that I didn't know he was running. Oh, I was going to mm. ask what it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I am upset that the kids have had a terrible time, but mm. I was thinking maybe I go downstairs and purchase <laughs> see myself. If see if there's any there. But unfortunately, I haven't worn a G-string since... Well, ever. Okay, fair enough. It's not, and it's not a comfortable item of clothing for me, Red. No, I think Jody took all of them anyway, so you're 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 stuck there. Do you like a g-string, Jody? Uh, yeah, I find them really comfortable. Do you? Yeah, they're definitely for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is the most comfortable thing about the g-string? Um, taking it off, but also the attention <laughs> I get. Yeah. yeah. You said you like to wear them on hot buses, didn't you, Jody? Yeah, I wore one right now on the way here. For anyone listening, it's 25 degrees outside. So with these lights on us in the studio, it's about 35 degrees. Jade has an ice lolly. I have a Fanta lemon. There's a tube strike on as we speak when it comes out. It probably, hopefully, the, the workers have been crushed by our lovely government. Um, no, I support the workers until it gets in my way. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I had to do a show and I thought, Great, you know, fight for your rights, guys. And then <clears throat> it took me 40 extra minutes to get there. And I thought, fire them all. Well, I have not been inconvenienced by this whatsoever. No, because you travel exclusively by Uber. Because <laughs> Jade is a film star. That is true. You've got a movie coming out, Jade? I have. What's next it year. Next year. It's called The Greatest Days. Yeah. And it is about... Uh, it's about four girls from Clitheroe um, and it's set to the music of Take That. Yeah. And uh, I'm one of the lead girls. Yeah. Ashley B plays another of the girls, mm. Alice Lowe and Maka Okafer. And then there are five lads who play the band. Yeah, and then nice. Five girls who play our younger selves. Okay, so you've been filming that for the last like two months? Yes, been in Greece. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'd say you're the most successful guest we've had on this podcast. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's not a high honour. We've had the likes of Ed Knight on here. <laughs> we, we, we even asked Josh Weller recently. So, you know, but um, <clears throat> you're his, uh, that's why you got the ice lolly, because <clears throat> we knew we had a VIP coming on. So we thought, pull out all the stops. Jody had some left over from his last trip here. I just thought I would like have an ice lolly so I could suggestively lick it towards you because I know <clears throat> how uncomfortable you get whenever I say or do anything remotely sexual in well, your company. Well, it might boost our listeners if that does, if that's your thing. <laughs> Subscribe to the Patreon, please. Uh, so Jade, mm -hmm. we're about to get in the time machine. Yes. This is a thing I do. Bobby doesn't like me doing it. All right, go on. I like Bobby, it. <clears throat> Bobby's in jail, so he can't do shit. Shut up, Bobby. <sighs> He's not still downstairs. No, no, no. He got, uh, he got pinched. He saw. I should have seen his face when he realised one of them. He went downstairs to check, and he went. There's usually five down there, and there was four. Oh no! He was, he was just terrified because one of them had obviously escaped through the vent and told the police. His whole operation rumbled. Bobby's g-strings just <laughs> finished. <laughs> um, we're in the time machine. Uh, what would you rather, the front or the back seat? 
Oh, you've you've flown the time machine before, and I'm uh, I'll be at the back. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, where are we? This looks like 1996. <gasps> wow! Quick, let's turn on the television. What's that? It's Rolf Harris's Animal Hospital. Turn it off. God, that made me upset. I need to listen to some music. What's on the radio? Oh, my God, it's R. Kelly. Turn it off. <laughs> Here we are, Jade. 1996, a very different time. Um, yeah, it was... Uh, I, I feel like this year feels like it was like my year. Okay, why? I just feel like I became like a conscious person. Yeah? In this year. I, went, I was at school. I like bought, I, I you know I I got cassettes. I had an interest in music, and you went. I'm a conscious now. I I, <laughs> I saw a millionaire holding onto two trees. I just thought, meh. <laughs> <laughs> Jarvis Cocker famously in 1996 decided he did not like. Yeah. Michael Jackson pretending he was Jesus. We did an episode on 95, and I said that happened then, and some YouTuber. Commented saying it was 96. It was so 96. He will be creaming his little pants right now <laughs> if, uh, if he hasn't stopped listening because he was so angry by me getting it a year wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that. And what, what were you doing in 96? Um, I was like falling in and out, well, falling in and out of love with like famous men I was never going to have. Who were they? Um, Ray, well, uh, Romeo and Juliet's Leonardo DiCaprio. Of course. He was a big, big deal for me. Yeah, he was for everyone at that time. Um, I'm guessing that was 1996. I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio was really about that time. Oh, I got really obsessed with... I think this was the year that Jerry Maguire came out and I sort of sneakily... I, th I don't know how I ended up watching it because it was older than I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I watched Jerry Maguire... older than I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, was that Tom Cruise and Cuba Gooding Jr.? Yep, and Renee show Zellweger, yeah. show me the money. Um, you had me at hello. Okay. And then I got really into that song "Secret Garden" by Bruce Springsteen, uh, which led me on to the song "Philadelphia." Yeah. Streets of Philadelphia. Yeah. And then I got so obsessed with that song that I um ended up listening to it for nine hours on a field trip to Germany on a coach. Okay. Over and over and over again. Well, for nine whole hours. Yeah, I kept replaying. Where were you rewinding. going? Germany. But where in Germany? Hamburg. Okay, so you weren't like visiting a camp or something. <laughs> <laughs> no. We were going on, I did German at school, so um, we just went on a little, here is Germany trip. Yeah, yeah, okay. Learn some stuff. Okay, and yeah. yeah, nine hours on repeat. On repeat, yeah. Jesus Christ. Who had to sit next to you for that? No one. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember much in 96. I was seven yeah, years we... old. I remember Euro 96, so one of my earliest memories of like, football. Gareth Southgate missed the penalty and then nearly resolved it all last year, but then we all missed penalties again because that's what England do. So he that... was so vilified. <clears throat> like, yeah. They, the world hated him. And luckily for him, there was no social media back then. So Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, the, I, do, I don't know much about football. But I know how much people hate Gareth. Yeah, Hogan. yeah. No, it's, it last. It will last forever. That one moment. And then they tried to do, like you said, they tried to do that sort of. Oh, he's got a backstory mm -hmm. thing, and now we love him. Look at him; he's the underdog. And then, yeah. it, then we just went straight back to abusing him again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way of the country. It's the way of sports. <sighs> Why does anyone do it? Um, because they get a lot of money. That is true. And all you have to do is just turn off your. Twitter and it doesn't exist. That You're is literally true. just in a hot tub on Bali and <laughs> whatever Simon from Watford thinks of you doesn't fucking matter, basically. Yeah. Um, 96 was a sad year for romance. What? How so? Michael Jackson. Divorce Lisa Marie Presley. Yeah. Yeah. Which I always thought was going to last. Did you really? Yeah, I just thought there's nothing about either of these people that suggests this won't be a long and happy marriage. <laughs> <laughs> what, you didn't think the um, daughter of Elvis Presley and mm. Priscilla Presley mm. um, and 
the son of Jimmy, <laughs> son of Mr. Jackson. Was Mr. Gonna, Jackson, what was his name? What was his name? Not Jermaine, that's his brother. It was uh, Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson. Joe yeah. Jackson, yeah. So yeah. the son of Joe Jackson and Elvis Presley. Were, uh, uh, I thought it was a of... match made in heaven. <laughs> and I don't know why it did, didn't last. Did you not see them on, I think it was a chat show, wasn't it? Where they were like awkwardly sort of sat next to each other trying to pretend that they have any sort of level of public displays of affection and... It was super awkward. I think it might even been Oprah. Or okay, someone. yeah. And, yeah but yeah. then <clears throat> Oprah was asking them questions about their sex life, like, "Do you have sex?" Mm. Like, I mean, are we asking couples that question nowadays? Yeah, I don't think they would nowadays. But I don't think Jack Michael Jackson would be on TV as much either. Imagine I just mm. sat here now and asked you if you had sex with your wife. I know it's a weird. It's a weird thing. But back then, it was sort of the shame era where you're allowed to do stuff like that. And there was actually no repercussions except for the actual TV show. And yeah, you, didn't, you wouldn't trend on Twitter. TV was probably better, actually, wasn't it? It was just a bit... I remember really enjoying TV in 1996, whereas now I don't watch any. Would well, you remember Jerry Springer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it they get someone opera. on. opera. Yeah, he'd come out in front of his dad. His dad would go ballistic. <laughs> They'd have to get Steve, the security guy. Whatever the guy was come <laughs> in, break it all up. Jerry, Jerry. And it was just an absolute shit show but it was it was kind of fun and then at the end he would sit in a window and he mm. would um give jerry's thoughts of yeah the yeah yeah and he was always really philosophical he'd be like if you fancy your brother don't have sex with him yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no it was a, it was a better time it was a more innocent time everyone was less serious i feel yeah i, th I feel like you know we could get away with having shows where like people with severe mental health issues were able to just fight each other in like, Yeah, yeah, be exploited for our entertainment. <laughs> in a You're just going to stick those two mentally unwell people in like a pool of jelly and just have them fight. Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. find two people on the poverty line, give them $50 uh, so we can mock them <laughs> for our entertainment. A that, simpler time. Yeah, that was a simpler time. And no one complained about it. No, they didn't at all. There was no one going, I think this is... Well, the only way actually back then to complain about anything was to go on something called... Um, what's it? Uh, there was a show on BBC called... Um, was it Points of View? Points of view, yeah. Was that 96? It might have been a little bit earlier. I remember watching that. Maybe it was that a bit earlier, but there was a show around that time mm -hmm. where you, if you wanted to voice an opinion, like now you just go on Twitter and then news publications will do lazy journalism and take that as news because you see it all the time, like fans angry at this. Like yeah, one yeah. person said it. Whereas back then you had to write a full-blown letter. Yeah, and those days were better when you actually had to write a letter with a pen or something. Then you had to go send it. Because then invariably at the end of writing said letter, mm -hmm. you're normally karma. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Can't just fire out a tweet. Um, Why did they divorce? Did you ever know? I, well, um, Jackson and Presley. Should we have a look at the divorce? There, there will be a reason on there, won't there? There'll be like a filing. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look. Irreconcilable yeah. differences. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what they were. Yeah. Uh, he was Michael Jackson. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And she wasn't as famous as him, probably. Well, she must have. I wonder if she got money in the divorce, and then she's got Elvis's money and Michael Jackson's money. <clears throat> Do you think Elvis had a lot of money at the end? Of his his uh, estate is probably worth. Even the film that's just come out will be paid money into. Should be getting money off that. And the Elvis estate, yeah. Yeah, but, but blue suede. Every song that gets his image rights are massive. But not everyone who's been like a huge star mm. ends up with loads of money. Look at O.J. Simpson. That's true, but he has had to spend money on other things and naked gun wasn't just him he was brilliant in it i've said this on the pod before he i was, love N naked gun yeah he was fantastic was that was an ensemble piece was yeah. elvis is his own man yeah oj should have done some more sort of solo comedies <laughs> but i don't think he could just stomach just him i think he sort of blends in behind all the comedy quite well so yeah i mean i mean it's quite hard to sort of separate him from the other thing that happened in his mm. life the football um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but actually, famously, that um, I, in my research on May thirteenth of nineteen ninety six, OJ went on to British television, yeah, um, to discuss his non guilty verdict, and actually came across very well because I watched a whole bunch of it. Okay. And then in the in the interview, the um, uh, the interviewer says, "Are you doing it for the money?" And he went, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes I think if you want to have a believable argument in a situation. 
some element of truth needs to happen for you to win the argument, mm -hmm. which is like if you deny all responsibility for everything, people just aren't going to believe you. But if you if you allow yourself to just a f say a few things that went wrong from your point of view, people will believe you. Amber Heard, for yeah. example. Okay. She just swore blind, none of it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She took yeah. no responsibility. She said, I'm an angel. And it was like, no, you're not. She should have gone, I was toxic too, but he did hit me or yeah. whatever. It, it would have been way more believable. So are you saying that OJ Simpson's like Amber Heard? <laughs> well, it was called The Trial of the Century. Yeah. And I reckon that we've got a new contender. And it was a lot more fun, the Johnny Depp one. It overshadowed, sadly overshadowed the Colleen Rebecca Vardy one. Which I think they should oh, have really held did. off. They should have held off because now this is done. We, we could all get into that one. They should have held it off. Well, the thing is about the OJ one is some woman got uh, some woman and a man got stabbed to death. So I reckon because this one was just about two bickering people who don't like each other. Yeah. Um, I reckon it was way more fun because of that. Shitting in someone's bed's always more funny than <laughs> stabbing uh, two people in the neck. I think. Yeah. Is my take on that. So uh, I'm just trying to find out why they got divorced. Kind of the rumours started to circulate, but she was his rock and she supported him and said, I don't believe you did anything wrong. A lot of people still don't. His Macaulay music... Corkin. Yeah, exactly. Spent loads of time with him in his bedroom, mm -hmm. which is a three-story building in itself. Okay. Um, His whole bedroom is like three floors. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm still not completely swayed. I'll be perfectly honest. I watched the documentary and everything, but mm -hmm. as I always say, and when... Lots of people were asking me about the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp thing. Mm -hmm. I always say, if they say, well, who do you believe? And with regards to the Michael Jackson thing as well, my answer always is, I don't fucking know mm -hmm. because I wasn't there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we all have to know and we all have to have a viewpoint. Yeah. Usually based on what gender we're from, you know what I mean? It's always tribal. Yeah, it's always tribal. It's always tribal. Um, But so I did find out, if Amber Heard was fat, mm. I would have believed her completely. <laughs> well, I believe Johnny Depp because uh, he's you look really like hot. Him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my you fellow, look like my you look like Johnny guys. Depp. If like someone had like fallen asleep on the computer whilst photoshopping <laughs> Johnny Depp. <laughs> Someone had said I looked like a portly him. Um, he was actually a therapist. It was the first time he'd met me on Zoom. I was like, oh, great, thanks. I feel way better, much better. Was it 70 quid I owe you? Um, <clears throat> but so she married Nicolas Cage. Yes. After. She's had a few quite what mad marriages. Fuck? Yeah. This is insane. What a roller coaster. Yeah. She, I mean, girl. She, do you know what? If you've got loads of money and you're bored and your dad's given you everything you ever need and you don't need mm -hmm. to want for anything, just marry some crazy pricks. Marry crazy pricks. She's, the thing is, the problem is, is she's got money because that would be the best tell-all book of all time. I know. The lady who'd married Nicolas Cage and Michael Jackson. I know. Why doesn't she open her mouth up? Because oh, well, she's, she's got, got money. So much money. She doesn't care, you know? Yeah, it is. The, she's got actually, no reason to do the tell-all book. That is the thing where, you know, earlier on I asked, does she still have money? Because did Elvis have money when he died? That does show that yeah. she does. Yeah. She couldn't, like, say <clears throat> Elvis died and he didn't have any money at all and left his family with nothing. You can't really see, like, Priscilla Presley and Lisa Marie Presley, like, getting a job down at Tesco in no, order no, to pay not, the bills. Not, not at all. Not at all. They'd have to, they'd have to do what they know. Well, I'll just check his. That's estate where I work. want to get to with fame. I want to get so famous that when my when it all sort of disappears and I'm no longer trendy, I'm too famous to go back to call centres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. You need to get into. Well, you could do what Bobby tried to do and build a sweatshop under your house to try and earn a, a few extra quid. Um, Twenty three million is estate is worth. Elvis. Yeah, but I'm sure you look pictures of him. Like him, well, another one says 30 million. These are always like way off, these net worth things on the internet. Yeah, you should have a look at my net worth. It's okay, nuts. Let's, let's check it out. Um, I'm sure like Elvis's face is up there with, you know, it's him, Muhammad Ali, uh, Michael Jackson. Like I'm talking the most famous people of all time, you know. All I'd men. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I'll try and find Beyonce, uh, yeah. Marilyn Monroe. That's another icon. <laughs> Uh, Jody, help me. I think that's it. There aren't any other famous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Albert Einstein. I was going to add. He's another man. Yeah, Einstein's a man. 
Um, yeah. Well, we need a few. Well, Jade, that's why you're here. What's my net worth? Okay, Jade's net worth. Jade Adams, net worth. Um, one, to, one to five million dollars <laughs> at the age of 35 years old. Um, yeah, they're saying you're worth between one and five million dollars, depending on how many Ubers you got that week. <laughs> This one I just got. Have you got a million dollars, Jade? It's for me to know and for you to oh. never know. Oh, <laughs> see, this is where the year is. The minute Bobby leaves, we get millionaires on the pod. <laughs> yeah, none of the bullshit of the usual times. This is a new direction we're going in. Remember, it is American dollars as well, so yeah, it's slightly like half, less, like seven hundred or whatever. We'll have Michelle Obama on next week, Jody. We keep the uh, mangy fox away from this pod. <laughs> Um, um uh, can gone. I tell you? You brought your own info, which for a millionaire you didn't have to do. Um, Tupac Shakur had a busy year in 1996. I mean, really busy, but it they're was... not busy at all. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, he released two albums. Okay. Um, he went to prison. Yep. And then he died. Yes, he was shot. I don't know if anyone else in 1996 had that busy of a year. Yeah, it's uh, the the highs and lows and. Yeah, fuck me. That's a lot of a lot of stuff. Two albums is impressive. I just think it's like interesting that both me and Tupac had great 1996s, except yeah. for the end of his. And the end of mine was pretty shit anyway. Why did you get shot? <sighs> Basically, it was kind of like a shooting, but I did get stabbed in the leg did with you? a compass on the bus stop at school. Rival rat crew? Ba no, it was actually my own crew. They oh, turned on me. they turned. <laughs> really? What happened? Go on. So basically, uh, I was hanging out with the wrong sort of people. Yeah, sounds it. They mm. lit the school toilets on fire, and I was stood next to them, and I flushed it. Yeah. Then uh, we're all out in the playground, like laughing at what we'd just done. And then Mr. McGregor comes over to us and is like, "Come with me." Apparently, they'd seen smoke coming out of the toilets, but I still don't know how that was true because the, I know how big the flame was. It was like toilet paper in the bowl, lit up, flushed. I yeah. don't know how there was billowing smoke. I suspect a rat. Yeah, okay. There is one of them with the group that I think ratted us all out, but okay. I don't know. Anyway, so we go to the office and just before we're going in, I, I turned to one of the girls and I was like, I've got matches in my sock because oh, I smoked because, you know, badass. Yeah, yeah. I got matches in my sock. And then when we were sat in there and he asked us about it, the girl pointed at me and said, she's got matches in her sock, it was her. And they all turned on me. My parents had to come in. My mum said a very famous sentence, which is, our daughter is many things, but an arsonist, she is not. <laughs> and then they believed me and my story and not the three other girls. And yeah. I ended up, uh, they ended up hating me for it and stabbed me on the leg, stabbed Ooh. me in the leg on the bus stop with a compass. Fuck, in a sort of revenge for being a, well, they thought you were a snitch or maybe. If it hadn't have happened, I wouldn't be sat here on this podcast with you right now. Why? Because I then was very lonely and sat the next day at lunch with a bad leg, with my lunch on my knees, feeling very sorry for myself. And two girls came and joined me and said, are you OK? And I said, yes, I just don't have any friends. And they um, invited me into the music room and changed my life. And I stayed there for five years, learned how to sing, did GCSE music, got interested in musical theatre, performance, drama. Bish bash bosh. On You're welcome. Movies. Yes. Brilliant. And now I'm in a movie. That's Talk. all it took was a compass to the leg. All it took. Mm. So me and Tupac Shakur. Yeah. Having quite the year. Quite similar people as well. Yeah. And do you know what? Said if that was like a rusty um compass, mm -hmm. that could have been lethal. Yeah, you could have died. Or had your leg cut off. And then you might be even more famous because be you've got one-legged uh, phenomenon. Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jade Adams, yeah. the one-legged phenomenon. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I'd be fat. I always think that. If I had one leg, would I still be fat? We'd well, be a lot more effort to move. I reckon I'd be muscly up top. You yeah, know? Well, you could have to be. Yeah. You'd be doing all the work that your leg would be doing. Um, so, Tupac, um, I was thinking... Um, imagine, because you know, whenever the at the moment, every time Tupac comes up, there's mm. always another name mentioned immediately after Biggie Smalls. No, okay, <laughs> it's not 1996. Okay, um, it is the t year 2022, and someone in celebrity land has very much attached themselves to the Tupac Sh Shakur story, even though I cannot find on the internet 
a timeline of their relationship I whatsoever. Know who you're talking about. Even though she bangs on about it on her red table talk constantly. Yep. <laughs> I can't see any evidence of their relationship except for one photograph. I tried. I looked today and that is Jada Pinkett Smith because she used to date him. But I found an interview with her saying um, she stated that the couple attempted kissing once, but they lacked the physical chemistry required from her romance. Essentially, we've been more romantic than Jada Pinkett Smith and Tupac Shakur. Why? Because then nothing happens. Oh, okay. So they I've had do... more. I've had more sex with Jody, and I just met him ten minutes ago. <laughs> than, than, than Jada and Tupac. Yeah, because uh, their bond was even stronger than that. Because that's what she's saying. She's saying they were such good friends. But Will Smith has a huge problem about it. It's all into that cocktail that led to the slap. I think Tupac's another. I've seen him in interviews saying he was so jealous, felt not adequate, and Tupac's obviously got this like alpha male image, whereas Will Smith was like the Wild, wild west, fresh prince guy, you know? No, he's in Men in Black. That's cool. Yeah, but so Chris Rock recently called him the softest to ever rap. But he also just got slapped by him. So, of course, he's going to say that. Yeah, but he is Will Smith. I can't think of a softer rapper, if you think about it. Welcome to Miami, home of Danny Yemi. <laughs> that is true, actually. Yeah, he's all, like, he's, he was, there's nothing wrong. He's a talented guy, but he just in a time when. Tupac was the king and he's doing these gangster tracks about like, you know, all the gang stuff and other stuff as well. What, but sorry, what what what's what what are in Tupac's lyrics? Um Bad words, uh words about shooting people. If you listen to Hit 'em Up, his song about Biggie Smalls, there's words I can't say. Um <laughs> but he said a lot. You um, know? Did he ever do a track about Jada? I don't think he did. Maybe can, he did. Can you imagine if Tupac Shakur had not died in 1996 and him and Jada's long lo love affair lasted until now, yeah. whether or not, um, you know, what it would have been like if Chris had done a joke in front of shot Tupac. Him. <laughs> it would have been a bloodbath. <laughs> Tupac went to prison. I might get a lot of shit for this, but everyone ignores it. He Why was he in prison? Sexual assault. Yeah. But was. no one talks about that. On International Women's Day, people post pictures of Tupac with a quote about we must learn from our women, da da da. And it's just like, does no one, we just completely just go meow around that fact. Well, some people like to separate the arts from you know. the, the, the uh, altruism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, but like, he's a, he's a you know, strong figure in that culture. He's like a. You know, still his mother him, as well. But... His mother, Tupac Shakur's mum, mm -hmm. was like, I don't, you know, don't, I don't know everything. She did some like huge stuff and got arrested and stuff on like in political activism. Jodie, do a little. Yeah, yeah, she was a Black Panther. Yeah, was she a Black Panther? Yeah, I think there she was go. pregnant with him. In, and Tupac's an amazing talent, brilliant, but it just seems in the time when we're, everyone's very focused on these sorts of matters, on sexual assault and stuff like that. Everyone ignores that with Tupac, and it's it's intriguing why I don't know why. I reckon it's because he's dead. Well, they made a hologram to bring him back. You know what I mean? When Louis C.K. was yeah, banned from England, we didn't make a hologram but Kanye <laughs> to did... do stand up. But Kanye brought back Rob Kardashian as well. He did actually. Yeah, he did. Yeah, for the birthday, that was fucking weird. Well, I mean, what do you get a woman who's got everything? You get her two things, right? You yeah. get get one number one. He's got her two gifts recently and they've both featured on the TV show. The first gift was getting her to have a hologram of her father. Mm -hmm. So he talks to her and then he made the dad say stuff about how great Kanye was, which I thought was an absolute trick. It's I, amazing. Well it's, done, Kanye. I think that was the point. She went, mm, I need to leave this yeah. man. <laughs> he's fucking <laughs> he's, ma he's making my dead dad. <laughs> Holding the dad's skeleton going, your husband's the best. <laughs> <laughs> And then the second thing he did was get the computer with the Ray J porn video one. For yeah. Him. But I reckon that's bullshit because they would have copied that. They would have copied that over and over and over again. They didn't keep it on one like and the laptop, the computer was like a, an old like IBM computer, which is a good segue into another thing that happened in 1996. OK. Um, in oh, February 10th, 1996. Um, IBM computer Deep Blue, which mm -hmm. was a chess computer, becomes the first computer to win a game of chess against a human, which was Gary Kasparov, who was the reigning champion at that time. Oh, okay. So he's like, you imagine this guy, he spent his whole life becoming really, really good at chess. And then they're like, right, we've made this computer, we want you to play a game. 
and then it's and then this it's this computer beats him. Well, they yeah, it's not fair on him because they teach every eventuality and outcome. They taught him his moves. Fuck. And then guess what Gary did? What? Seven Shot days himself. later. <laughs> <laughs> Killed himself. Did he actually? Did, no. Okay. <laughs> Seven days later, mm. Gary did a rematch and he won. That's a sort of rocky moment, isn't it? Training against the computer. Where the fuck is that movie? Also, why in the mid- first game didn't he just take his cup of water and dash it on the computer when he thought he was losing? <laughs> I there win. There you go, you, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was also the Tamagotchi. What, it was 96. Yeah. Do you know I had Tamagotchi? It uh, does not surprise me one bit. <laughs> I kept it. I kept one of them alive for ages. I bet you kept them alive, then you slowly deteriorate them and bring them back to life. <laughs> How were you as a? Were you like Bobby, uh, or were you? <laughs> I am. Um... I, what, my favourite movie was Sleeping Beauty, although mm. I used to be like really jealous that the genders were the wrong way around because I reckon like a sleeping man would be way better being w- woken up by me for a kiss because all I've ever wanted to do is save a man with my lips. Okay. Um, but then I got given a Tamagotchi <laughs> where I got to take something down to near death and then bring it back to life. <laughs> yeah, <again. yeah. laughs> they were fucking weird, weren't they? It was like, what was that for? It was, I, like... it was really good for me because I couldn't have pets because I'm allergic. Yeah. Um, so I can't have animals. And it's just something to do, I suppose. Well, I also got, I, I you know, I fed it and I did everything it needed to do. I you had to of, clean up their shit. Yeah, but not like, f- it was just like computer shit. Yeah, yeah. You just go, you go. I wonder um, how good it would have been at a game of chess. <laughs> I wonder how many guinea pigs starved to death because their owner was looking after the camera <laughs> got you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did have a rat called Lily around that time as well. So I reckon. Um, yeah, and what happened? <laughs> she died. Yeah. God, she did. Multiple tumours. Oh, really? Okay, not Excuse starvation me, then. Burping because of the Coke. Mm. Oh, sponsored by Coca-Cola. Yeah, um, yeah and, and Fanta. Yeah, um, Lily the rat, she died of tumours. Oh, well. Oh, most rats do. So it's a laboratory thing. R.I.P. Lily the rat. <laughs> My least favourite animal. Um, do you want to know what the most popular toy was in 1996? A Furby. Nope. What? Not Tamagotchi, not Beanie a Furby. Baby. Nope. What? Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, they're brilliant. The film is that when the film came out? Was it? I don't have know. A look, it must be around infin- that time. I used to have one. You press a button and it goes to infinity and beyond. beyond. Yeah, and, and yeah, the wings, wings come, come out. out. Brilliant. It's probably still at home somewhere. I mean, it was the best trick, wasn't it? Do a movie about toys coming to life and then sell the toys and then, you know. I've never thought of that before, and you just destroyed my childhood. <laughs> That's what the whole thing was, wasn't it? It was a, to- it was a giant for advert for toys. Sake. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And continues to be. They yeah. They keep making them. Toys merch story. <laughs> <laughs> That's Imagine horrible. doing a flip reverse of that and doing a story about like a merchandise shop when the t-shirts come to life. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like those, those like little yeah, flags yeah. that you can get and stuff and like key rings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be such a boring film. Or you just do a real life story about the producers and their evil plot to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's... <laughs> A trail of cocaine and murdered hookers. <laughs> yeah, you know. The to- behind the scenes of Toy Story. <laughs> Unbelievable. And they just yeah, and they have the random, you got a friend in me. They're you just ching, 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 ching. How about Toy Story Happy Meal? Woody's favourite crisps. <laughs> Shove them in your face. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, and, that's horrible. Oh, get this. Mm. Um, the voice of Woody in the doll... Yeah. It's not even Tom Hanks. Ooh. Tom Hanks admitted it on Graham Norton. Why didn't he do it? It's his brother. It's Tom Hanks' brother? Tom Hanks' brother does Tom Hanks' voiceovers. Why? Because he's busy. And they have the same voice? Yeah, they've got really similar voices. I mean, my mum, my sister, when she was alive, and me, we all... If you pick the, like, no one can differentiate between us on the phone at all. Okay, that's interesting. Well, good gig for his brother, then, and just stand in and be... Doug, I think his name is. Do you Doug want to fact check that? Doug Hanks. I'll check that out. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, me and my brother and my grandmother all, we all had what, the same wait, voice wait, as people. Your grandma couldn't... speaks like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not now, she's dead, but people couldn't like distinguish the voices between me and my what, brother and my grandmother. What was, a, what was your grandmother's favourite thing? What was a, your favourite thing your grandmother did with you? Like mine was, she made me apple pie and gave me coffee. Don't ask these questions, Jodie, because the answers are quite bad sometimes. <laughs> Uh, gave me deep baths. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Can you just uh, do like, Jodie, do you want to go to the bath? 
Jodie, do you want to have a deep bath? Because <laughs> okay. mummy won't let you have one. I love how you this specif- is too traumatic for me, I love, I love how you specify a deep bath. Yeah, yeah. Are, are there variations of baths? Well, Jodie's mum would only let him have an inch of water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when, when mum was out, he could really let the tap go. <laughs> um, Poverty. Did um because Chet Hanks is oh, sorry Chet Hanks is his son Tom Hanks he's got a Jamaican accent Colin Hanks yeah, yeah and Chet Hanks. Colin Hanks is the good son and then there's a bad one Chet with Hanks tats is on his face, with the tats <laughs> he's also um, he speaks in that patois a uh, like Jamaican <laughs> face and he's <laughs> he's, a, he? he's a rapper if anyone hasn't I might have talked about it in the podcast already but I've been obsessed with this boy since like 2009 boy he's the same age as me since he was a boy and I was a boy in like 2009. Because he released a rap song, and he's got this whole lyric about stabbing someone through the peephole with a ski uh, pole. <laughs> wow. And it's funny because all his weapons are like rich kid weapons, you know, <laughs> with my ski pole. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but he's brilliant. He, I follow him on Instagram, and he does these like inspirational videos about how to sort your life out, even though he's an unemployed <laughs> kid who's in and out of rehab. And it's like, mate, you can't. You're your only life advice is be Tom Hanks's kid. <laughs> Just pray that your dad's the most successful actor of all time and the wife's successful, Rita. Rita Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, mm-hmm. she did really well. Yeah. Um. Recently, had to defend his wife. She got pushed over by paparazzi. Yeah, he wasn't happy. Yeah, he wasn't. Do got... not fuck with Tom Hanks. No. Because you know what? One thing I know about Tom Hanks is he can run real fucking mm. fast. Yeah, he can, and for ages as well. Yeah, he won't stop. two years. He'll have a beard by the time <laughs> he gets catches up to you. Well, yeah. Um, uh, some other stuff that happened. Yeah. Uh, mad cow disease hit Britain. I remember that. Do you? I was a vegetarian at the time. Dodged it, but I do remember it. The French were like, "We're not touching your beef." Um, yeah, it was. It was everywhere. I just didn't ever know what it was, and I was like, "How does this affect me if mm. it's cows?" Yeah, it was one of those things. You remember everything up until coronavirus felt like a false alarm. Yeah. I mean, for us Westerners, like. Ebola has been terrible in yeah. Africa and stuff like that. But for us, gluttonous, comfy Westerners, it was always like, oh, bird flu, really? I'm so <laughs> scared. And then with mad cow disease, I'm sure loads of farmers had to burn their cows, which was bad. So sorry, guys, for that L- loss of profit and stuff. But it never was what it was. we thought it was going to be, like the Millennium Bug, this. And then I remember Corona hitting and being like, lol. Yeah, I didn't believe it and for like, a long yeah, time. Yeah, it's in China, and it's like the film. Like, yeah, sure. And then we were just seeing it cr- gradually creep over. Do you know when I realised it was serious mm. when I had a gig cancelled? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I did a gig where I was just like fucking trashing. I was just like, yeah, sure, you know. And it was, um, it was after. It was like Simon Amstel was on after me, and I was joking because I hadn't sold many tickets and he'd sold out. And I was like, cough on the seats. So I'm still as fans get corona, but it was all like, ah, ha, ha. And then, you know, months later, we're in lockdown. And they said, oh, can we live stream the gig that you did on that night? I'm like, no fucking way. Because I didn't know this, but then, then by that point, it was, we were on like 3,000 deaths a day. And I, this is like three months prior when prior. I just thought, oh, this is all a load of bollocks. So they're trying to push monkeypox on their soul. And you I can know. tell when they're really going for it because they always blame the gays. Well, yeah, they, yeah they're yeah, they saying it's a sex thing. It's not. It's a contact thing. Yeah, because Jody's straight and he's got it. So I think that he, he What's can't. What's it like? A <laughs> uh, bit itchy. A bit itchy. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you have a deep bath, Jody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Me and Red compete for how many baths we can have a yeah. day separately, though. We don't, no, don't not, know not, each other not that together. well yet. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, tr- I, I can run my bath as high as I want. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I let it flood the room. Because when you, <laughs> <laughs> what like in Shape of Water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always baffled me with that film that they managed to get the whole room like full of water like that. Like mm. it was just so unbelievable. I know, like the sea monster that fucks the mute woman is probably less believable. But I just felt like, you know, just some reality. Wait, what film is this? Shape of Water. I've not seen that. Oh, yeah, it's about um, it's kind of the same story as the sea creature from about a woman who falls for a government um pr- prisoned uh sea creature okay. and they <laughs> communicate through boiled eggs what um no she feeds him how have i eggs. not got a series or a movie out <laughs> like, fuck me <laughs> Uh, what's the arc? It's like, well, there's not boiled eggs in it. That's fucking plush, surely. <laughs> boiled eggs is the thing that gets her in trouble. 
Because one rolls away and then the guy that's like keeping Mr. Sea Creature. Um, it's got... Uh, oh, Doug Jones, who plays um, that guy in, in Pan's Labyrinth. I don't know that. I haven't seen Pan's He's Labyrinth. He's the most, world's most famous physical actor apart from the guy who plays Ross from Friends. <laughs> who okay. I just think is great at physical comedy. But basically, he's like a physical actor. He plays also, he's in like Galaxy Men. Mm-hmm. Not Galaxy Men, Mystery Men. Yeah. Um, he plays like the, the pencil guy. That's one of his lesser known things. Oh, he's in um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He plays one of the gentleman in that he is in um hellboy mm-hmm. he plays abe sapien in that um he's always in stuff but he's always in prosthetics but okay. he plays the sea creature and he falls for this woman who can't um speak yeah mm-hmm. and the two of them um end up fucking inside of a bathroom okay. that f- they she fills with water because he's dying because he needs to be in water and she's like got him to escape from the laboratory. Why didn't she take him to the sea? Um, Because it was... Because she wanted to fuck him in the bathroom. <laughs> but he's dying. <laughs> yeah, but she wanted to fuck him first. You know, that's <laughs> women are like. Also, you know what she wanted to do? She wanted to make him better first. Okay. <laughs> she needed to come too. Oh, God. <laughs> well, on that note... <laughs> six nine. The American rapper, are you aware of 6 9 No, nope, I don't know what that is. 6 9 is an American rapper who, he's part of the, you know how like trolling has met and has met mu- music and acting. And, so like he was a troll who got a big following for being a troll, br- writing abuse to people, making abusive videos, stuff like that. What? Yeah. And then he became a rapper. He's Sorry, got... on what platform is he sending... Uh, like probably Instagram, YouTube, stuff like that. This has got something to do with 1996. He was other born than in fact- this year. Uh... Sorry, sorry, I should have said that. He was born. He has 69. He's got 69 tattooed 69 times on his face. Um, He's got rainbow colored hair. And he was like, is he... he does a gangster drill. Whatever. Where is he from? He's from New York. But he's like a little troll. He's tiny. He's got this long rainbow colored hair. He's got like the most disgusting, like rainbow colored grills. Um, anyone who doesn't know, Google what he looks like. It's ridiculous. But he became famous because it's like, look how fucked this guy is. Because you instantly go, what is that? And he's terrible at rapping. He admits he's bad at rapping, but he sort of affiliated himself with a real gang in order to boost his rap image. And so they started hanging out and he'd stand behind them while they did actual crimes. He filmed them. It's like me in the school toilet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is very similar. He filmed them robbing somewhere and uploaded it onto Insta because he's an idiot. And then they all got arrested. And within an hour of being in a holding cell, he decided to snitch on the whole gang. And <laughs> they've all gotten like 25 years to life in jail or something. He's back out on the streets making music. He uh, he puts a rat emoji after everything he says, <laughs> which I think is quite refreshing for rap. It's such a like keep your mouth shut, don't snitch gangster genre or gangster rap is anyway. There's obviously other forms of rap, but he's just gone. No, I'm I'm the snitch rapper. <laughs> I'll fucking tell on you. <laughs> so how long ago was this? This was like two, he got let out early, but he got sentenced like a year for a fray, and he ordered someone to get shot, and him they missed. Um, but he got out because of coronavirus, so because he has asthma. <laughs> What? Yeah, um, but he's wanted. He's going to have security for the rest of his life. But he was born there. I. The thing is, this is an interesting. But if you do listen, do a deep dive on him because it's it's just unbelievable. He's such an he's an emblem of our time. Like you don't have to be talented. He's he's clickbait as a person. You know. So he um is going to be killed by the rest of them when they're all let out. Yeah, when he's like fifty five. And the thing is, <clears throat> he can't get another job now because he's got six nine tattooed sixty nine times on his face. And even if you're into tattoos, you still go, this guy's a fucking idiot. <laughs> he um, <laughs> is absolutely never, he's going to be having, be at the same employment office as Priscilla Presley. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lisa Amber Heard. Marie, and Amber Heard. <laughs> <laughs> the unemployables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not for the normal reasons why people are unemployable. Yeah. But because they, <laughs> the brick went and got that tattooed across his face. It's I tell you what Amber Heard could do that would make me go, okay, fair enough. She just went, look, guys. I'm a crazy bitch. I rolled the dice. I fucking lost. <laughs> I was pissed off. I wanted to take him down because he pissed me off. I got caught out. Happens to the best of us. You kind of go, fair enough. And she's like, look, the tears in court were fake. Do you know what I mean? I was trying my best. I'm I can't to win. cry. <clears throat> yeah. I find it really difficult to cry, Yeah. Um, which has been documented. I don't yeah. like him. He hurt me. 
he was a drunk, he was an abusive alcoholic. We yeah. all believe that. Yeah. Um, but also I have I have committed perjury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I did shit in his bed. Yeah. Because it was fucking funny at the time. Actually, I reckon she didn't shit in his bed. I reckon her mate did it. Yeah, yeah. She yeah, paid yeah. her mate Someone to do else's... Like, that's a mate thing to do, you isn't do it? Grand. Like, I've got friends who would shit in a guy's bed if I asked him to, you know? Yeah. There's a White Lotus. Have you seen that on oh. Sky? There's one scene where this guy has been pissed off by this guest for so long. He, The hotel managers, this guy's been nagging him the whole series and... And he just goes into his room, unzips his suitcase and just squats and shits in it. Oh, no. And he's got the most satisfied, angry look as he's doing it. <clears throat> I've not laughed that much in a long time. It's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It's the last taboo. What? Sh shitting and, shitting and stuff. I think there's a few more taboos as well still. No, nah, but like in movies and stuff, like they've touched upon every single thing that people find taboo. But yeah. one thing mm. you haven't, they haven't really touched upon that. It's like that's not in porn mm. is shitting. Mm. It's not like a thing you see in films. What? So you want to see like DiCaprio shit on Kate Winslet's face? <laughs> on her chest or do. Mm. Or a glass table. I'd love him to take yeah. a shit on one of those. And then he'd look down and he'd be like, look, both of us could fit on here if I'm putting you underneath, you fuck. Born, 96, Tom Holland. Oh, how'd you Everywhere. Feel about, how'd you feel about Tom Holland? I find him deeply, deeply annoying. <laughs> Everywhere I look on fucking my Instagram news feed is him on a chat show telling a really boring, boring story. story. Yeah. There's men who make him sound down to earth. He'll be like, I was in a cab for the audition. And this guy says, I recognize you, aren't you? And then there'll be the wrong name because it's self-deprecating. It's like a hack joke. Yeah. And then he'll be like, it. you know, a few months later, he'll be like, did you get that role? And I'll like see a poster. Of my, you know, it's just like these really boring stories. And you go, this isn't true. It's not his fault, though. It's it is. publicity. Mm. It is. And he's probably a really decent bloke. I think mm. he is a lovely lad. Mm. I don't know if I call him a bloke yet. No. But I think a lovely lad for sure. Yeah. Um, and he is just, you know, he's got these huge movies he's got to market, and that's mm -hmm. how they do it. They do it. So we're in the cult of personality. Look at what they're fucking doing to the royal family at the moment. Mm -hmm. The other day, I saw Prince Charles sat on a stool with a mottled background talking about how he grieves for his father. What are we doing to yeah, people, guys? Everyone has to be fucking Adele Everyone has Anna to Gadsby. have a fucking. In <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> no comment. But look at Adele. Like, she used to just put an album out and we'd love her for it, and mm. then she had to sit opposite Oprah and she'd be like so what's the album about she'd be like divorce babe divorce yeah, and she's yeah, like yeah. I wanted to write an album so my son knows exactly what the reasons why I had dumped his father <laughs> that is so <laughs> um, I just don't feel that we there's anything we can really do about this at the moment because the problem is is that there are some people in the world who have like really interesting stories because they've made like wild decisions whilst those interesting moments happen in their life. But there are some people that just observe stuff and then regurgitate it and it's always really boring. Mm -hmm. But the problem we've got is lazy journalism is now, um, it's just lazy journalists. Yeah, because yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. like, oh, tell me some... They, like you know, Edinburgh Fringe is coming up yeah. for you, mm. and uh, and and you're probably being asked all sorts of weird questions. What do you think of cancel culture? <laughs> um, why don't you, you? What do you want from me? <clears throat> <laughs> Fuck off. Um, what about? Um, are you like into sort of like Zendaya and Tom together? Are you into? That no, side? I just find uh, apparently she's amazing in Utopia. I don't really know who she is, but it's just Euphoria. one of those. She's got this euphoria, it, it, euphoria, utopia, euphoria. Yeah. She's got one of those like fucking, there's too many people and it's not their fault again. It's like I was talking to someone the other day about it. Like that Louis Theroux rap song is so annoying now. And it was, well, I just, you know, it's whatever. I don't know the Louis Theroux rap okay, song. Okay, but everyone's TikTok dancing to it. And it's not his fault that I've heard it by mistake millions of times yeah. on Instagram. Um, well, I've just, for example, so I have a, I've told you to do this loads, Red, mm -hmm. in our friendship. We have a real one outside of this situation. Yep. Um, I've said this to you that um, the best way for you to function in life without getting angry is to get on your mute words on Twitter mm -hmm. and mute things that get repeated. So, for example, Women. today, we're <laughs> <laughs> you have to be more specific. So, on my muted words today, mm -hmm. it's the Wednesday just before everyone goes off to Glastonbury. Yeah. So, I have muted Glastonbury. Yeah, okay. Because mm -hmm. I know it's happening. And I know everyone else is going to be there. I don't need to hear mm. about people doing Glastonbury because I've watched 
Beyonce at Glastonbury and it was one of the worst gigs I've ever been to. It was muddy as fuck. She, I didn't think the performance was very good. Mm. She called it Glastonbury. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you're getting at least two mils. Say it right, please. Yeah. I, it's not the same as like, I just prefer sitting in my room with the food I need, dry feet, no trench foot on its way, listening to the music in my ears. Mm -hmm. Is that too much to ask? So I've just put that on mute. And I suggest you do that I with could the do Louis that. Theroux song as well. Yeah, I could do that. And it, the... it just helps. Yeah, I just hate when people start parasocial relationships, like with couples and they're like couple goals about these two. Do you want me to read my mute list to you? Yeah, go on, let's have it. Let's have it. All right quite funny. I'm sure it is. Because it's not stuff that you would think... It's not stuff I hate. It's stuff that people say too much. Muted words. Yeah. Okay. Hashtag FA Cup. Okay. I don't need to see any more about football. Well, the FA Cup was ages ago. I, yeah, but when it, was, when it happened, you, I had to just get rid of it. You're pre-planning for next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, hashtag Love Island. Yeah, I fair can't enough. can't do that. Adele. Okay. Um, um, for some reason, and I don't remember why, but I could probably get rid of this one now. Alicia Dixon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the year is podcast. <laughs> um, Alfie and Zoe, which I think is <clears throat> Alfie Days and Zoe Suck, yeah, the yeah. YouTubers. Yeah. Um, the word Apollo. Okay. Which I think is to do with live at the Apollo. Not the spaceship. No. <laughs> Sick of the fucking spaceship. Sick of it. <laughs> um, uh, Biden. Yeah. I, I don't need any more information on Joe Biden. You don't want to see him falling off a bike? No, I don't need that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Boris Johnson. Yeah. Um, God bless him, even Chadwick Boseman. Boseman. Oh, my God. <laughs> got, the, got the boot. Just because, Jesus Christ. Just because it was very sad that he yeah. died, but I didn't need to see a million people saying bullshit about him. And as someone who has lost someone else, it isn't like helpful like i always feel bad for like caroline flax family like mm. every time her birthday comes along they've got to put up with like reams and reams of bullshit on fucking yeah well i'm sure they're not on twitter to and people will share videos going look at this interview when he knew he was gonna die and you're like well this is just fucking depressing um brexit yeah fair carol enough. baskin <laughs> um <laughs> uh the um conservative and conservatives mm -hmm. Um, Corbyn, yeah, coronavirus, yeah, COVID, <laughs> COVID nineteen, um, the word coming, okay, um, <laughs> I think it's Dominic Cummings, dancing on ice, yeah, Dave, yeah, uh, Diana, <laughs> <laughs> good list. Do is is I, that it? No, oh God, okay, We're only on D. Oh, it's alphabetical. Oh, Donald my. Trump. Yeah. Um, drag race. Yeah. Um, uh, election. <laughs> European. <laughs> For some reason. European is banned. For some reason. Okay. FA Cup is banned. <laughs> FA Cup's back. Um, the word fat. Yeah. The word fat shamed. <laughs> um... <laughs> You hate everyone. <laughs> you hate the positive people. Yeah. I was going to say, she's basically muted Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what do you do on there? <laughs> you must see like one advert or something and that's it. Um, football, the term gained weight. That's gone. <laughs> okay. Gary Lineker, Girls Aloud, <laughs> Glastonbury, Greta Thunberg, Harry and Meghan, Harry Potter, Holly Willoughby. I, the word island, <laughs> James Corden, yep. J.K. Rowling, um, jo Joel Domit for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Joel, I love you. I'm so sorry. I don't know why, but you must have been trending for some reason. And I couldn't see it anymore. Um, <laughs> oh, it must have been. Maybe it was Jonathan Ross has been muted as well. Yep. But I do follow him, so I do mm. still, still see stuff. Um <clears throat> Uh, Courtney Kardashian, the the term Kardashian, um, latitude, I think latitude festival, um, <laughs> <laughs> the word lineup, um, <laughs> Love Island, um, uh, the name Megan, okay, um, <laughs> the word obesity, overweight, the word petition, Pete Davidson, <laughs> Philip Schofield, Phoebe Waller Bridge. <laughs> 
politic, politics, Premier League, presidential debate, <laughs> Prince Andrew, Prince Harry, Princess Diana, put on weight. Um, the word racist, real Donald <laughs> Trump is gone. The term really proud. <laughs> Why? Um, and then Rebel Wilson's gone. I can't hear any more about her losing weight. Mm. Um, Russell Brand <laughs> is gone. Um, <laughs> uh, Super League is gone, and the term league. <laughs> Why do you have to, what? Do you, what do you do on Twitter? I can't, what does it look like on there? <laughs> Tiger King, Tiger, Tiger King, and Tiger King. Um, the word Trump. I don't want to see any more about Trump. The best bit about all of this is the, the last five are mm. um, variations of the term Yas Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Yas Queen, Yas Queen, Yas Queen, <laughs> Yas Queen and Yas Queen. <laughs> I mean, that's a good list. I think fair enough. <laughs> good for you. Well, I think that's a great episode of the Year Is podcast with movie star Jade Adams. you got your own podcast coming out. I do. It's called Welcome to the Neighbourhood. It's on uh, BBC Radio 4 and BBC Sounds, where I basically get amongst all of the neighbourhood scandal that you find in all of the WhatsApp and Facebook group forums. Amazing. Um, and I have a guest on with me as well. Okay, great. And you're going to be doing Hackney Empire in London and you're on tour, aren't you? I am. I start my tour in August and I will be at the Hackney Empire in London on October 15th, but I'm also playing in all major cities as well. Brilliant. Where can they get tickets? Uh, they can get tickets from jadeadams.com. Amazing. Go see the show. I've seen it. It's absolutely brilliant. Patreons, we've got a great uh, bonus episode for you, so we'll jump into that. Jade's going to be joining us. If you're not on Patreon, sign up because you miss out. The episodes are way better than this one because it's free. Thank you to our super geniuses, Christopher and Andrew. And I don't know how much money you have paid to make these boys say this, but well done. And Spencer, who's also a super genius. Thank you very much, everyone. And also, I want to say, get well soon to Melanie Anderson. I hope you're feeling better. She's been in the hospital very Valued, valued listener of the podcast was meant to see us in Carlisle, but I was away and Bobby had to cancel the gig because he had coronavirus. But hopefully we see you at the show soon. Thank you so much for listening and get better soon. Bye. That was another episode of The Year Is. Thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Leave us a review. It all helps. I'd like to thank our producer, Jody, And also I'd like to thank uh, Josh Weller for our intro music and song. It's uh, it's very catchy. It's very nice. I'm sure you'll enjoy it at the beginning. So big thanks for Josh Weller. He's on Instagram at Josh Weller. Josh Weller. Follow him and uh, keep spreading the word of the year is. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>